<laughs> hi, hi and welcome to Nourishing Conversations. Um, if you can hear us, just um, type in the little um, chat box when you get in the room and give us a hoy and say hello and let us know how you're going. So we know some people out there can hear us and are listening to us. <laughs> always so, a bonus. Always a bonus. <laughs> So welcome to Nourishing Conversations. These are conversations with real people about real food, real life, and good fun. <laughs> We're going to have some fun tonight. We've got a great guest, Jules Galloway, who's also a naturopath and all-time good person. <laughs> so we're gonna, <laughs> so um, welcome, everybody. And just, yeah, let us know if you can hear us by just typing into the um chat box and we'll wait till just a few minutes till everybody's logged in. I can see a few of you logging in now, so welcome. Okay. Yay. So <laughs> so Jules. <Thank> you. <laughs> um my name's Leah Williamson. I'm your host tonight. And I've got with me Jules Galloway. Uh, and we're gonna have a good chat tonight about um all things oh Astrid said hi Astrid, Rebecca, hi, hi. great Yay. everyone can hear us. All right. So always, always, always good. Okay, Jules, do you want to start off by letting everyone know a little bit about you? Cool. It's always good when you see those comments come through. It's like, all right, now it's a party. Now it's a party. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's about, a, just to let you know, there's about a one-minute delay, I think, from when you type your comment to when we can see it. So we're not ignoring you. We're, we're not playing hard to get. We just haven't seen it yet. So, yeah, just hit enter and, and we'll get there. Um, so hi, I reckon we need George. to get yeah. music playing. The what? <laughs> we need to get that like the little interval, uh, the interval music playing while we're waiting. You know, get I a know. bit of funky music in. Yeah, <laughs> sorry, oh, off so, you go. No, look, I, I haven't had wine nights. So I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna sing for you tonight because you know I haven't <laughs> had any wine. This is um, I've got Soda Stream soda water in here tonight, so it's all, it's all above board, mate. So I won't sing you any hold music. Um, uh. So yeah, <laughs> so. Um, as Leah said, I'm a naturopath. Um, I'm originally from Melbourne and I now live in beautiful Bangalore, which is very close to Byron Bay. And I graduated in 2005, so I've been practicing for over 10 years now. And I specialize in helping uh, women who are fatigued to find their shine again. I tripped over this as my calling really uh, because it just seemed to be what I saw in my clinic over and over and over again and it's a, a massive running theme. Uh, I just kept attracting these women who were aged 35 to 45, some were just over 45. They usually had one to two kids probably around the time that one of those kids had started school or maybe both of them had just started school and these women just hit the wall at a time when they felt like they should have been getting some of their me time back because you know one of the kids would be off to kindy or school or daycare or whatever they were like yay i finally got time to myself again after the last few years and they just had nothing and they'd gone from feeling tired all the time to starting to actually feel exhausted I and think you were talking about me there. <laughs> it's seriously like it's, yeah, it's so, so relatable. It's, yeah, it's just it's it's just about everyone really. But there are different degrees of it, and and some women can power through, and some women hit the wall earlier or sooner, and that really depends on our own genes, uh, on our own makeup, like how many kids we've got, whether we we're working a job at the same time whether the childbirth was, you know, a traumatic childbirth, whether it was all fine. Um, and then a lot of it comes down to diet as well, which you'd know yourself, Leah. Yeah. yeah. So, so as, um, as a naturopath, I've always uh, been a massive av advocate for healthy living. Um, but personally, as Jules, the, you know, taking the naturopath part out, I was always really, really sick growing up. I was a very sickly kid. Um, I had a lot of health problems when I was, you know, in my teenage years and early 20s, but no one really put two and two together. They just kind of like swept me back out the door. It, they, they were like, look, you're not really sick enough that we're going to do lots of investigation, but it was like asthma, eczema, bronchitis, chest infections, glandular fever, blocked ears, blocked nose, blocked everything, um, fungal infections, you name it. Like 
every little thing that could come along came along and it was funny because like you know all the doctors just kind of fob you off and go here there's a pill for this there's a pill for that here have another antibiotic you know and so I just had chest x-rays and antibiotics and all that sort of stuff and off I went back into the big wide world and it wasn't until much later when I you know started hanging out with some healthier people who taught me how to eat gluten-free dairy-free and sugar-free that I started to really turn it all around and I realized that all these really annoying, niggly health conditions that were causing me to have days off work and that were causing me to have all these issues could, were actually preventable with food. And so I started applying that to myself. Um, I got a lot better. But then I had a setback with adrenal fatigue myself. Um, I had also discovered that I have a condition called pyroluria. Uh, and it all started to fall into place because no matter what I did diet wise and I've been really really strict over the years when I've had to be because as a naturopath or even when I was a student you know we'd, we'd try everything like if it wasn't a juice fast or a liver cleanse or an anti-candida diet like we we did it all um, and I found that what worked best for me was being very very close to paleo funnily enough and when I was very strict with paleo my symptoms would subside but then I found that it would sort of plateau and I'd never quite get through to that next level. I'd never get all my energy back. I'd never get all my vitality back. I knew that the, you know, eating paleo was stopping me from getting a whole lot worse. I figured that out. I was like, well, at least I'm much better than if I was still eating wheat bix and milk for breakfast and toast and you know, jam for lunch and all of that. At least I know I'm better than if I was choosing that path. But I still couldn't quite push through to the next level. And so once I figured out what I needed to add to that diet to really get you know my energy levels up and to really get my health through to the next level, that's when I started to create a business and a practice around it. And that's why now I don't just teach the diet, but I teach women how to shop, I teach them how to cook, I teach them what sort of exercise they should be doing, I teach them about mindset, meditation, relaxation, all the other little things around the diet, it's not just about eating a perfectly clean diet, it's about what else you're doing in your life as well. And, and that's what I think has been the missing link for a lot of women with adrenal fatigue. Yeah, so true. Just the, the whole lifestyle, looking at it, because I, you know, quite often in the, in the group, we, I hear from a lot of women that just say, oh, well, while I feel really good, um, you know, eating paleo or eating you know, real food, I still just, you know, still have a lot of the other symptoms, you know, and I still yeah. have weight gain, I still feel puffy, you know, I still can't. And then you, you know, talk about some of the other things that you're looking at. And, you know, like I just ran the poll then and I said, what's your biggest issue right now? Are you fatigued? Are you stressed? Are you burned out? And 75% said they're stressed, you know, so yeah. there's a big, big factor there. Yeah, absolutely. And that's not just because I finished work put the kids to bed, make dinner and all that in like three hours, right? It's like yeah. we're talking about in general. <laughs> yeah, look, I did that tonight. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, look at that. Like it's, like it's, it's quite mind-blowing, isn't it, that stress is the most prevalent issue we've got there and stress is behind so much of it. And I actually saw... Uh, a study, some, uh, it was in my Facebook feed this morning, but it came from somewhere really credible that said that uh, scientists have now found a link between uh, stress levels and cancer spreading. So um, it wasn't about causing cancer, but it was about uh, cancer more likely metastasizing. And so apparently like this, you know, the, the chemicals that occur in the body when you're stressed, you know, the hormones and things that, are, that occur in the body when you're stressed are somehow signaling this cancer to bolt. And that was, that's really scary. That's really freaking scary because they're just starting to now touch upon what stress does to our bodies and I think they they haven't even scraped the tip of the iceberg they've, they've shaved a tiny bit off the top of the iceberg but we don't know but we can you know we can guess I mean we all know what happens when we get stressed don't we like that's when our health starts to falter and yeah, that is definitely. one of the it is one of the signs of adrenal fatigue actually when um, you're stressed but you hold up really really well until you stop 
Uh, you know those people who go and take a holiday after working themselves to the bone for months and months and months, deadlines and blah, 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 and juggling, and then they finally go, oh, I'm booking my trip to, you know, Hamilton Island, and off they go. They lay on the sunbed and bang, they get a cold or a flu or some sort of virus, and they spent half their holiday feeling like crap. And, yeah. and that's one of the signs of adrenal fatigue, that your, your body keeps on going and going and going until you stop. And then when you stop, it's like the body just goes, bring on all the sickness because I've been waiting for this one moment when you dropped your guard and then, you know, and then you just get all the crap all at once. So, yeah, we, we yeah. know what stress does. We definitely yeah. know what stress does. But it's good that science is catching up. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I read somewhere that um, the statistic was 80% of all diseases is caused by stress. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. I think that's very conservative, or yeah. you know, it, and if that's the you know caused by, what about all the conditions that are exacerbated by stress? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, Astrid's just said here that she has complex PTSD, and she's wondering if you have information regarding that on the body. So she hasn't found much online. Um, PTSD is like it's lumped in with the other anxiety disorders and mood disorders so um, anything any sort of PTSD in terms of its effect on the body is going to be put in the same category as someone who's got severe anxiety and so any sort of severe anxiety is going to cause you to rip through all your B vitamins and your magnesium more than the average person uh, so we need our B vitamins and we need our magnesium to keep our nervous system calm and to create neurotransmitters and such so if you've got PTSD um, if you're more towards anxiety then you would be looking at things like, um, you know, B vitamins and magnesium to tone the nervous system and to calm things down. If you are at that point where you're exhausted and the PTSD is pushing you more towards depression, then we would be looking also at, at a different approach. Um, so it is, it's about finding out where each person's at um, with that particular condition because PTSD you know, it can be used as a bit of an umbrella term and underneath that there's lots of little kind of subgroups. Um, so you can have PTSD um, who've got anxiety, PTSD with depression, you've got PTSD with like severe insomnia or PTSD with, you know, with hallucinations and flashbacks. You've got all these little subgroups underneath. But, I mean, naturopathically, I'm not talking about psychologically because you obviously need to be under the care of a, a lovely counsellor who understands you, but um, naturopathically, I would be investigating to see if you've got um, with uh, problems with things like MTHFR gene. I would be, I'll write that down in here actually. Um, so I'd be investigating MTHFR. I'd also be checking out Sorry, I can't talk and type at the, at the same time. We finally found my non-superhero weakness. Um, I can't talk and type. Oh, my God. Life is over. Um, so pyroluria um, is another one you could knock out. Um, these are things that if someone's um, had trauma uh, and they're suffering from one of those two, and they're both inherited conditions, they are both things that will make PTSD worse. Um, so you need to make sure that you don't have those underlying as well. Um, same with food intolerances if you've got um, a predisposition to anxiety or depression and you're eating certain foods that you shouldn't be eating then they're going to exacerbate the condition so i would definitely be looking at all of those sorts of things and then looking at toning the nervous system and building neurotransmitter health as well so um, 70% of our neurotransmitters are created in the gut and i'm going to be talking about gut health a little bit later on and so uh, you can't build a healthy nervous system without a healthy gut. So anytime someone's got any sort of, you know, um, anything sort of, whether it's anxiety, PTSD, depression, any of those sorts of things, even schizophrenia, they're now saying that 30% of people with schizophrenia they think have pyrrol disorder, uh, which is that pyroluria that I just mentioned. Um, but yeah, any of those sorts of conditions, you need to go back to basics and look at gut healing first and foremost, because it doesn't matter what else you do, if the gut's not healthy, you just won't see that healing happen. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. That's all right. Um, so you've got a bit of a talk for us tonight to listen to. So, um, how about we uh, get get into that one, and then we'll answer a few more questions. If you if you think of a question along the way while Jules is um, speaking, feel free to type it in the chat box and. We'll get to it when we can, or 
um, or we'll get to them at the end, but we'll definitely get around to answering, answering those questions. So yeah, I'll and just take them. Sorry, just quickly before we uh, before I share my screen, because once I share my screen, I can't see the chat bit anymore. Um, okay. But, but Astrid's also just said that she has BPD, and I'm assuming that means bipolar disorder. Um, bipolar disorder is also connected with pyroluria, um, so that would definitely be a really good place to start as well. And also, bipolar disorder is connected with. Um, neurotransmitters not being, you know, correctly balanced and made properly. So back to the gut healing as well for that one too. <laughs> um, all right, so just a moment. I'll share my screen and... All right, and now... How's that looking? Yep, that's looking good. Woohoo! <laughs> I love it when it works, hey. <laughs> yeah. Now I can't right. talk too much, otherwise no one will see the screen, so I'll let you um take it away. Ah, oh, cool. Do you pop up when you start talking and interrupt yeah, my that's screen? Right. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this could get dodgy. All right. All right. Now feel free to butt in because it's not, you know, this isn't it's not the world's most technical uh, slide. It's not even a slideshow. It's a one pager that Leah, I will also uh, send to you, and you can email it out to participants if you would like. Um, so it's, <laughs> I can Thank actually, you. yeah, I'll send you a link to this when it's all over. Okay, so let's have a chat about what adrenal fatigue actually is because it's getting to be quite a fashionable term. And it's a fashionable term because a lot of people have it. But when a lot of people have something and it becomes fashionable, sometimes all of a sudden everyone thinks they've got it. So there are different stages of adrenal fatigue. Um, there's also, again, I talked about umbrella terms before, like it has become a bit of an umbrella term for any sort of fatigue or chronic fatigue. Um, but let's talk about exactly what it is. And then we're going to talk about some of the signs and symptoms um, and whether or not this sounds like you. And if it does, stick around and I will tell you what we can do to sort you out with it. So our adrenals are two little glands that sit on top of the kidneys and they pump out stress hormones in response to stress. It's that simple. They're actually there to help us. Uh, when we're faced with a very stressful or even dangerous situation. And this is part of what's called our fight or flight response. And so our fight or flight response is designed to get us out of trouble. Like it's it's actually trying to do us a favour. So, and, and given that you're all paleo people, you'll understand when I say this is a very primal response. And so many things in the body, so many biochemistry things in the body are because we haven't actually changed that much from when we were living in caves in terms of, of what our body does. And so this fight or flight response was designed to get us out of trouble in caveman times and in tribal times when we were living in caves, we're living in huts, you know, your house might have been made of sticks. You go to the front door and what do you see there? Some sort of wild animal and your fight or flight response kicks in to get you out of trouble. And it delivers a massive jolt of cortisol and adrenaline into the bloodstream and cortisol and adrenaline make you feel very wired. They make you feel very strong. They're designed to give you power. They're designed to give you speed and they're designed to get you out of trouble. So you can either fight that saber-toothed tiger that's standing at the door to your cave, or you can take flight, which honestly is probably what I would do, and then get the hell out of there. And I actually know that I'm not a fight person, I'm actually a flight person, because one time I was in Byron Bay and I was down near the beach, and I, had a, I, I nearly stood on a brown snake and the snake arced up at me and it went It went like it was going to bite me, it had its head up in the air and it was hissing. And what do you reckon I did? I ran. I didn't even know I was running. You know when you're faced with a very dangerous situation and your body takes over? This is what I'm talking about. I didn't even know I was running and I didn't know that I was screaming. I heard this screaming but didn't know it was actually coming from me. I didn't know any of this until I was so far down the beach, I was nearly in the ocean yelling at my husband to hurry up because he was walking slowly going, oh, a snake. You don't want to make any fast movements. And I was like, I think I just made some fast movements. I'm down on the beach screaming. So 
we all now know that I'm a flight person and I also know that that response was nothing that I could have monitored, that I could have mediated. There's nothing that I could have possibly done. Like it was like my body from the neck down just took over. And so have a think about some times when you've been really stressed all of a sudden and you feel that primitive response, whether you know, you're in a traffic jam or maybe someone cuts you off and you have a really near miss, like almost an accident and you slam on the brakes. And you know when you, your heart has palpitations and your fingers tingle, but suddenly you also feel very alert and you feel very alive and you feel really strong and kind of accurate in your thinking. This is the adrenaline and the cortisol coursing through your veins. Now, Unfortunately, our bodies don't know the difference between a saber-toothed tiger at your cave door or someone cutting you off on like, you know, on the way home from work in your car. They don't know the difference between, your, you know, your adrenal glands don't know the difference between a saber-toothed tiger at your cave door or your mum-in-law ringing because she wants something and you know it's going to stress you out or your boss ringing you to bring forward a deadline that you thought you had in hand, or the kids getting sick and then you're in a traffic jam and then you're in a line at the supermarket and, 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 and. But how often do you reckon we would have had a wild animal at our cave door? Would it have been daily? Would it have been five times a day? Or would it have been more likely to have been weekly? Would it have been more likely to have been maybe once every few weeks or maybe even less often? So these adrenals are designed to get us out of trouble, but now they're just working overtime because being busy, this bit here, I'll use my fancy pointer. This is my new toy. Being busy equals being stressed. Your body doesn't know the difference. Your adrenals don't know the difference. And so what happens is just a constant pumping out of this cortisol and adrenaline. Now the adrenals, aren't really designed to do this all the time, so they get tired. And over time, the cortisol goes from being very high to very low. So we'll talk about the different stages of adrenal fatigue and, what, and which one you might be able to work out which one you're in tonight if you are. So let's have a look at some of the symptoms of adrenal fatigue. So first of all, the, the Captain Obvious at the top here has put tiredness and fatigue, So because I'm Captain Obvious at the helm tonight. But yeah, it has to go at the very top, doesn't it? But we're not just talking like being a bit tired. We're not just talking about being a bit sleepy at 11.30 in the morning or 3.30 in the afternoon. We're talking about that bone crushing fatigue where you can't do anything, where you just haven't got anything left to give. Um, and that's, you know, that's when you start to really worry. Um, energy goes up in the morning and down in the evening is a massive pointer towards adrenal fatigue. Um, we come out of the blocks all right in the morning, but then we plateau in the afternoon. You get home, get dinner, get kids to bed. You sit on the couch and what happens? You fall asleep. You fall asleep on the couch and at about 9.30, 10 o'clock, you wake up and you're really groggy and you're like, oh, I've got to go to bed. And then you go to bed and what happens? You get this little spike just here. So, you know, up in the morning, down in the evening, and then over here, it goes up just enough right when you go to bed, which is really annoying, just enough to stop you from going to sleep, which is this bit here. So poor sleep, you might have trouble getting to sleep or you might have trouble staying asleep. You might find that you don't dream. You might find that you wake up feeling really, really flat, like you've been hit by a bus, even though you might have slept like eight hours. Uh, so yeah, big sign of adrenal fatigue. Also, the inability to handle stress. The amount of times that I've had uh, clients come to me, usually women who've got a couple of kids, they're probably in their 40s, um, husband works really hard, so they're kind of left, you know, doing a lot of the house stuff. And they say to me, I never used to fly off the handle this much, but now, like, I just fly off the handle so easily and I never used to. I used to be like this great mom and happy and I feel really bad now because the other day I snapped at one of my kids for this thing that I would never have snapped at a child for before. And what's happening to me? I'm turning into this horrible person. You're not turning into a horrible person. You've just got adrenal fatigue. That, that 
cortisol going up and then later on as you progress through adrenal fatigue where the cortisol stops being made and it's going back down this changes your response to stress it changes your moods it changes how you handle things so it's actually not your fault all right you can tell that to the husband <laughs> um, blood sugar fluctuations I mentioned before 11 30 and 3 30 are the danger times um, and people who really crave sugar to get them out of that hole I really worry about those people because they are in the box seat for adrenal fatigue. Thyroid problems. Um, I've seen a massive prevalence of uh, hypothyroidism being connected to adrenal fatigue and quite often Hashimoto's as well which is a, a different, it's a different kettle of fish altogether because Hashimoto's is a thyroid disorder that is autoimmune in nature, which means it's caused by the body attacking its own self. And in this case, the body attacks, the, it's like the immune system's attacking the thyroid and renders it under functioning. Um, but that again starts in the gut, but also I believe that it's connected with adrenal fatigue because I've seen too many cases where it's all going hand in hand, but definitely an under functioning thyroid. So anyone with hypothyroidism, um, I always look at their adrenals and their cortisol levels as well as the thyroid because they, they do go hand in hand and they do feed into each other. Poor immunity and frequent infections. And I touched on this before for those people who work their guts out and then they take a holiday and they fall in a heap um, but also just people who get colds and flus more frequently and the the one that I find is the biggest indicator is people who when they get sick they used to get a cold but it would last for three days four at the most and they'd come out the other side feeling fine but now Whenever they get a cold, it goes for five days, six days, eight days, ten days, and they end up feeling worse afterwards. That's a massive sign because it's not like there's, a, you know, it's not like you're catching a different cold to the type of cold that you used to catch. It's still the same garden variety common cold, but it's what your body's doing with that virus now that is concerning me because the body doesn't have the stores to fight it off anymore. Low blood pressure is quite often connected with adrenal fatigue uh, and low blood pressure most people who've got it will know um, they'll, you know if you've been sitting down or lying down and you stand up quickly you get the head spins and then you have to sit back down again yeah, that's usually the number one indicator there are other reasons for low blood pressure so if you have got it definitely get it checked out um, it's always good to know what your blood pressure is anyway I'm not scared of doctors I'm just scared of going to the wrong doctors but I do think once you find a good doctor there are things that you should get every year and there are things that you should go to them for um, I'm one of those naturopaths that will refer to a doctor and then have the doctor refer the client back to me again afterwards I love sending people for um, blood pressure cholesterol iron levels all of those sorts of things and all of these symptoms here as well can be um, also you know a lot of these can be concurrent with iron deficiency too especially low blood pressure poor immunity so definitely you know if you're at the dock get that iron check thrown in because you know while you've got your arm out and they're taking blood you might as well get what I call the full service um, poor circulation very very common in people with adrenal fatigue Cold hands and feet. Now, if you're living in Brisbane, you won't notice this as much until it gets right into the depths of winter. But I know in Melbourne, I used to wear socks on my feet to bed from like March or April. It was from Easter through to November, right? And that is a massive sign that something's not quite right. Um, so if you've got a tendency towards cold hands and feet, or if you've moved to Brisbane because you hate the cold, um, you are more of a candidate for all these sorts of things. Low sex drive, well look honestly if you're burning the candle at both ends, um, if you're working really long hours, if you've got a couple of kids um, and you're looking after the household, like I don't even know how you've got time for it anyway, um, but yeah it is a sign of adrenal fatigue and that's because your body's busy trying to make cortisol and it's busy trying to make the adrenaline right now remember how I said your body's pumping out more cortisol and adrenaline than what we were designed to do so it has to draw on its resources in order to make those hormones and the precursors that it uses in the body to make those hormones are also the precursors that would normally be put into making thyroid hormones and reproductive hormones are you with me? So if it has to borrow some precursors from the reproductive hormone stash 
to make more cortisol and adrenaline, it will choose that over making reproductive hormones and thyroid hormones because it sees those as being not as important as getting you away from the saber-toothed tiger. So because it thinks there's a saber-toothed tiger at your door, it's prioritizing your adrenals over everything else and that comes at the expense of some of your other hormones. Now, I'm married to a barista and he hates me when I talk about this one because he's like, you're trying to get everyone off coffee. And I'm not trying to get everyone off coffee, but I am trying to get everyone to cut down just a little bit, even myself. <laughs> um, so caffeine either leaves you jittery or it doesn't work anymore. So if you're in the early stages of adrenal fatigue, you might have some coffee and feel a little bit wound up or a bit jittery or a bit anxious or a bit palpitation-y. Um, that's not right. You know, that's, that's, especially if it never used to do that to you, that's, that's definitely a warning sign. Or if the caffeine is just leaving you, you have your, you know, your double shot latte and now, oh, sorry, Brisbane Paleo, double shot long black or bulletproof coffee <laughs> and it doesn't work anymore, or it leaves you feeling flat or it leaves you feeling weird, right, then we have to talk about adrenal fatigue. Low back pain, now this one's in here just because it's in all the books. Whenever they talk about adrenal fatigue, they always talk about low back pain, but honestly, it doesn't usually happen until much later in the piece. But what I have found is people just getting aches and pains and like headaches and tension headaches and those sorts of things. And that's because when your adrenals are working overtime, they're using up a lot of magnesium and your magnesium would normally be used to prevent aches and pains and muscle spasms. So that's where that starts to come in as well. And last but not least in the lovely list of symptoms of adrenal fatigue, everyone's favorite, weight gain that's hard to shift. And you know, you, you put it down to getting older or you put it down to having kids or you put it down to not exercising as much. But also what can happen when you've got adrenal fatigue is those high cortisol levels tell your body to take the glucose that's running around in your bloodstream and store it as fat. And it does that because it thinks it has to fatten you up for a rainy day because it thinks that there's a saber-toothed tiger at your door. And if there's a saber-toothed tiger at your door, it means you might not eat that day. It thinks you might be going into famine because that's like a common thing for cave people. So if you, uh, it, it might just be something simple like eating, um, you know, a, a starchy or a carby or a sweet, you know, natural food. It doesn't have to be gluten or it doesn't have to be rice or it doesn't have to be a big, you know, slice of bread. Those carbs might just come from eating some, you know, naturally sweeted, sweetened foods or the like. But your body will tell, you know, that it will actually send out the insulin in extra doses to mop up what's in there and store it as more fat than usual because you're stressed and it thinks it needs to fatten you up. So your body's actually trying to help you and it's trying to stop you from starving. So it's, it thinks it's doing you a favor, but it's actually not. Now I'm just gonna stop sharing my screen for a minute, come back and say hi. Hello. Hi. <laughs> uh, there we are. So, yeah, there we are. Yeah, so I just ran a poll while you were talking and yeah. asked people, um, do you have many symptoms of adrenal fatigue? Oh, my God, yeah. 100%. 100%, what? yeah, too many what? to count. Oh, my yeah. God. Right. You're all in the right place. That's good. Yeah. At, least, at least we've got the right. If they'd said none, I was going to be like, right, that's it, I'm off. I'm going to go and, yeah. you know, catch the rest of that Melbourne victory game that's on or something. Uh, look, they're all changing it to none. Oh, they are. They're like, <laughs> oh, hey, you don't change the ball. Yeah. So, they're, um, messing, they're messing with me now. Um, yeah. That's, that's funny. Um, that's gold. Um, yeah. So I was going to say, yeah, as you were talking through that, I remember like in my um, early, well, in, in the middle of my adrenal fatigue when I was having that before it was diagnosed, um, I would quite often be, um, so tired, like, yeah, bone tired, like you were describing. And then I'd sit down at the computer after I put the kids to bed and eat some dark chocolate. And then I'd be so wired, I just could not go to sleep. And I would be up till like midnight or something like that. And then trying to go to, trying to, go to sleep, trying to wind down and just be so hyped up that I couldn't do it. So yeah, um, the second wind, yeah. it's, it's that second wind and everyone goes, oh, I'm a night owl. It's like, yeah, you might just have really, you know, messed up cortisol. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's I, so ironic. 
Yeah, I had to end up setting a, a reminder on my um, phone to tell me to go to bed at nine o'clock so that I wouldn't get to that point around 10 o'clock where I was like, okay, I'm awake now. Who's online? What am I doing? Ooh. Yeah, yeah. Time for round two of the day. Woo. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just having a look at the questions as well. And Astrid's just said to you, she's in Lismore. Now, Lismore is just like just up the road from me. It's about half an hour away. So, um, yes, I do have a room. We're currently renovating it at the moment. Um, this is the good wall right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, we're just we're we're in the middle of painting my house, so I'll have my consulting room ready again in about two weeks from now. Um, and yeah, face to face appointments are covered by health insurance, so a lot of people prefer them. But if you are far away and you need an appointment, I do offer Skype, um, and Skype's just not covered by private health insurance. That's all. Yeah. Um, so a few people have also said it's blurry and they can't read the list. So. Um, I might not flick back to that screen if it's looking a bit blurry because, you know, you can see my smiling face instead and I'll talk you through my notes which are not blurry on my phone. Um, <laughs> and, then, and then you can send everyone out that little handout afterwards if you like. Yeah, I, no problem. I can do that straight after. Yeah. Although, although I'd be getting close to um, bedtime then. <laughs> yeah, tomorrow is always a new day to be sending out things. <laughs> Yeah, it's all, yeah, well, it's almost second wind time, actually. About 20 minutes from now, we should be feeling really good. <laughs> That's right. Well, well, for you, you're in, um, you're in uh, the daylight savings. Oh, so, that's yeah. right. Yeah. Here, here in the rest of Australia, it's 9.37 p.m., just want you to know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sorry. For, for those of you who want to play along, just know that I've been struggling with time zone differences between here and Queensland all day, all day all day. Um, anyway, so I also wanted to chat with everyone about gut healing and the connection between that and adrenal fatigue. Now, adrenal fatigue is, you know, has a massive link with stress. We know that. It's, you know, it's caused by stress. It's exacerbated by stress. Um, we know that stress is, you know, the beginning of it. So we all, you know, we have, if you want to talk about epigenetics, we have to have like underlying reasons why the stress affects us. Like if two people in a room, you know, have both got, um, both got the same amount of stress happening to them, one person might have adrenal fatigue and one might not. And sometimes that comes down to genetics. It's not just diet. Diet can help. But that's just a whole other ballpark. But we're going to say, you know, for, for the, the record tonight that, you know, stress is one of the main causes of adrenal fatigue. And so we need to have a look, you know, to zoom out a bit and have a look at the broader picture. And that is we need to talk about gut healing because they know now that 70% of neurotransmitters that are made are made in the gut, right? So you need your neurotransmitters to be getting made perfectly in order to have balanced moods and correct response to stress. And we need to, you know, we need our neurotransmitters to be working in the right amounts in order to prevent things like anxiety and depression. We need them to be happy. And so if your neurotransmitters are not being made correctly in the gut, then your response to stress is going to be different, right? And if your response to stress is different, then you're going to let the stress get to you more than usual. And then what's going to happen is that just feeds the adrenals. So it's all just going over to the adrenals then and they're pumping out the cortisol. And so... We need to go back and look a few steps backwards and go, all right, we need to heal the gut because if we heal the gut, then we have to then give those neurotransmitters the best possible chance of being made correctly. Then our best possible response to stress is going to happen. We might just cope a little bit better. We might not pump out as much cortisol and then the whole system starts to work better because everything's connected. So... I wanted to just stress the importance of gut healing tonight and to make sure that, that everyone knows how connected it is. And, you know, people always talk about intuition as being like their gut and they talk about gut instinct and all these sorts of things. And then they forget that there's a reason that those sayings all started in the first place. And that's because the brain and the gut have always been connected. Again, it's just science is just starting to catch up now, which is awesome because now we've got proof and now we can shout it from the rooftops and be taken seriously. So gut healing is absolutely important. And in order to do that, you know, I believe that we have to avoid the potential food allergens and intolerances. So we eliminate 
the biggest suspects. And then if a person is really ill or if they're a special case, we might even do food intolerance testing to make sure we've eliminated all the suspects. But if you haven't, if you don't need to go down the path of food intolerance testing, I always recommend just dumping the gluten, dumping the dairy, dumping the sugar. The gluten and the dairy are the two biggest suspects when it comes to food intolerances. You take out that and you take out 90% of people's food intolerances, right? And we're not, you know, the nut allergies are another corner. They're in another corner over there. But if you take out the gluten and the dairy, that's when gut healing can start to begin because you've taken out the things that are upsetting the gut and it can't heal itself if it's busy being inflamed and upset, okay? So you take them out and then you also have to take out the sugar because although there's no such thing really as a sugar intolerance, but the sugar feeds the bad bacteria that are lurking in the gut and it makes everything else worse. So we've got to take that sugar out as well and processed cane sugar is the biggest suspect. So we've done that. Now, one of the things that I get asked a lot and it's happening a lot lately because it's, it's become very fashionable and very hipster and it's all over Instagram and that is, does sauerkraut or kombucha fix a leaky gut, right? And People are on the right track when they're getting into the sauerkraut and kombucha. They're definitely on the right track. But I, you know, I got, I've got a bit of an opinion about it all, <laughs> which I don't mind sharing. <laughs> but mm -hmm. what it is, is that, okay, so sauerkraut. Sauerkraut has to be made in Australia. Can't be made overseas. If it's made overseas and brought into Australia, they have to nuke it. They, they, what do they do? They pasteurize it to get rid of all the bugs right? So they're doing it to get rid of any bad bacteria because bad bacteria is very scary. Um, but when they're getting rid of the bad bacteria, they're also nuking the good bacteria. So they're getting rid of all the bacteria, which renders it useless. It's basically just soft, tangy cabbage now. So you can eat your soft, tangy cabbage, but don't expect it to do anything unless you've got beautiful Australian-made um, sauerkraut. Now, kombucha... Mm -hmm. Sorry, I was just going to yeah. say, so if I'm in the supermarket and yeah. I'm looking at this, you know, I'm in the international food section and I can see nah. this nice, you know, nah. German sauerkraut on the shelf, nah. stay away from that one. <laughs> it tastes really good on your paleo sausages, by the way, but it's don't, just don't count it towards your gut healing quota for the day because it didn't, it's, it didn't do anything except taste amazing. Yeah. 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 So it's got to be like alive and in the fridge and we have some really good brands. You know, like we've got Kehoe's Kitchen and Peace Love Vegetables and Lewis and Sons. So we've got, you know, quite a good choice of really good um, sauerkrauts and and, sour and fermented vegetable variations as well. Yep. Yep, definitely. So that's, that's one aspect. Now, the other is a kombucha. Kombucha is a fermented drink that contains a lot of sugar. Now, you know, a lot of people will say, the, the good bacteria eats up the sugar, but you're still adding cane sugar to make the kombucha, which means it's not really paleo, although, like, I'm not 100% paleo myself. I'm 80-20, so, you know, I can't pick on it too much, but I find that the finished product is still quite high in sugar, even though it's supposed to have been eaten up by the bacteria. But, you know, if you turn over the labels of the commercially made um, kombuchas, they're a lot higher in sugar, I've seen a lot of the more boutique farmers markets ones seem to be lower in sugar. And I think there must be some sort of, when you mass produce something, there must be shortcuts that have to be taken or even certain boxes that have to be ticked in terms of food production laws. I'm not sure, but the more commercial and the bigger the brand, the more sugar they seem to carry. So definitely well, turn over that label. Sorry, I was gonna say, and the more fermented it is, the more alcohol content it has. And they've got very strict rules around the alcohol content yeah. as well. So. Yeah, because apparently pea platters were getting done for drinking kombucha and then getting behind the wheel. I shouldn't laugh. It's like really awful, but it happened. Yeah, yeah so we've got so a great brand of kombucha up here called Bucci Kombucha and they were taken yeah. off the shelves because the levels weren't, yeah, were a bit too high. So, but now they're, yeah. they're back. Yeah. yeah. I also had a client recently who was on a ketogenic diet and it wasn't working. And so I got her to send me a food diary and she was drinking kombucha, 200 mils a day even though it was homemade, so it was the good stuff. And so she's now taken out the kombucha. I said, don't change a thing, just take out the kombucha. And then she got back to me a month later and she'd lost a couple of kilos. So 
There's, mm. yeah, there's something in it. There's definitely sugar in it. Um, if it makes you feel really good, like a bit too good, like a bit too freaking happy, then it could have a fair bit of sugar in it. So just go, if you're leaning towards a kombucha at 3.30 in the afternoon for your kombucha pick-me-up, that's a bit of a sign, isn't it? We always have a joke at our meetups that um, are we getting drunk off the kombucha because everyone tends to get a little bit happy after they've drank the kombucha and I don't know if it's alcohol or sugar. <laughs> it's a lovely rich tapestry of all of the above, mate. Yeah. <laughs> um, so getting back on track, um, the reason that I brought the, up the sauerkraut and kombucha is because they're really, really fashionable at the moment, but those on their own are not going to heal that leaky gut. They're not. Like, they are only one aspect of the gut healing, and they're actually the final aspect of the gut healing. There's three parts to gut healing, and the first part is what they call weeding. And then, so you've got your weed, your seed, and your feed. The first part is your weeding, and that's where you take out all the bad stuff. So you might take some supplements that, or some herbs that get rid of candida. Excuse me. You might weed out some parasites. You might get rid of some bad bacteria. Uh, whatever it is for you that needs to be done, that's stage one. We haven't even gone near the fermented stuff yet. Then stage two is the seeding and that's where we smooth everything over and we start to heal up the areas of leaky gut that need to be healed. And that's where we take products like glutamine, slippery elm and aloe vera, anything that gets that inflammation down, smooths over that area because once you feed with the bacteria, which is stage three, the good bacteria, you actually want those good bacteria to stick to the walls of the gut. So say this is the wall of your gut here. Say if it's all leaky and inflamed and it's not right, then your good bacteria is going to come on through and look at that campsite and go, nah, I don't want to camp there because I'm good bacteria. I like nice campsites. You know, it's like when you rock up at Blues Fest and it's muddy and the nice people look for the higher ground even if it's further away from the actual festival and the dodgy scummy people are like in the mud camping right because they don't care right and this is your good and bad bacteria right so say the you know the wall of your gut is the blues fest campsite and you got your good bacteria come along and they look at that campsite and they go no bloody way right no way am i camping there and on they go through your digestive system and out the other end now while they're in there you're going to feel good because you need the good bacteria in your body all the time to make the neurotransmitters and to make you feel good, right? But they don't stop and camp. And when they stop and camp, they proliferate and grow colonies, right? And you see that at Blues Fest, you know, someone will camp and stake out the area and then all their friends arrive, yeah? And then it's a party, right? But at first it's just like one person with one tent, right? And this is, so this is what you want. You actually want them to latch on. And once they latch on, they grow into a beautiful colony. And so putting the kombucha and the sauerkraut into the, the gut without doing the groundwork first, without making the campsite nice, it's only doing half the job. So you've got some nice bacteria going through, but it doesn't stop and it doesn't grow. And so what we need to do is take a couple of steps back, heal that gut, and then we put the good stuff back in. And that's when it will do so much more work. Yeah, great. That makes definitely makes sense. Yay. So, Jules, we've got 10 minutes because <laughs> yep. we're just like chatting away and, I, yeah, it's been a great conversation. But if anyone's got any questions, they should start popping them into the chat now. Yep. And while we're waiting for some questions to come through, do you want to let everyone know about your Shiny Healthy You? Yeah, cool. All right. So Shiny Healthy You is my 12-week program and I ran it twice last year and the results were really awesome. So I'm running round three again and we start on Monday. And so it's 12 weeks of healthy eating, education, positive mindset shifts, a little bit of exercise, a little bit of meditation, a little bit of everything thrown in that I mentioned earlier. And it's all for women who are aged 35 to 50 who are suffering from adrenal fatigue. Doesn't mean we don't have a couple of blokes in there. Doesn't mean we don't have a couple of people in their 20s in there. It's got lots of different people in there. But if you're aged 35 to 50 and you've identified with this webinar and you're suffering from adrenal fatigue, then I've created this for you. And so it contains what you get. You get three videos per week 
with my smiley face <laughs> every week delivered to your inbox for 12 weeks. You get a recipe bank with over 100 recipes and in those three videos per week there are a lot of cooking videos as well where we have a lot of fun in the kitchen. There's also a private Facebook group that's pumping with good vibes. Um, the women in there, as, as you'd know, Leah, are really positive and super helpful to each other. And I just love the little community that I've built in there. Um, I keep all my shiny, healthy you rounds together in one Facebook group. So the round three people are in with the round one and two people, which means there's people in there who can help you out. And, you know, further down the track, you might find yourself helping out as well. So there's lots of people in there sharing all their time and their skills and their energy as well. There's also monthly webinars with me so you get to ask all the questions that you ever want. Um, and the other thing that makes this program different, I mean apart from the fact that it's run by a qualified health practitioner um, and naturopath which you know that way I get to put my naturopath stamp on it. Um, but the other thing that makes it really different is that I don't set it and then forget about everybody. I'm in there every day answering questions, helping out adding things, adding value where I can to make sure that this is a personalised experience for you and not just one of those programs where you feel like a face in the crowd. So uh, last time we had about 130 people go through and so this time there'll be somewhere between 100 and 150 people on there. Um, so it's just enough to have a really good, nice pumping atmosphere but not too many that you get lost and feel like you can't get your question through the email guards. Yeah, yeah it was so a really good, good vibe in there last time and yeah great help from everybody and tip sharing and stuff like that yeah it's really cool really cool yeah yeah um, Astrid's asked she doesn't have Facebook do we have another platform or blog um, shiny healthy you the Facebook group is just part of the program um, but it might be worth I, I actually have had a couple of people uh, join Facebook just quietly and not tell any of their friends but join Facebook just to access that element of the program but I've also had people join the program who haven't been on Facebook whatsoever and they didn't miss it like they, they yeah. said it didn't you know it wasn't the worst thing in the world because there are other elements to the program as well. Yeah so you've got a really good course um, set up on your website and you know there's great downloadables and everything that you need all your resources everything like that all your beautiful recipes yeah. like amazing recipes, um, I love your shopping lists, you know, what you should keep in your pantry, all those kind of things, really great downloadables that you can print out and put on your pantry or take with you to the shops, that kind of thing, so really handy, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I should stress as well that there's no locked in food plans, um, so I'm not going to tell you what to eat every single day but I'm going to give you loads of options and then teach you how to plan your week yourself because I used to do health programs that had like locked in meal plans like here's your breakfast on Monday and here's your lunch on Wednesday and I surveyed people afterwards and you know what they didn't do them all they didn't follow them they followed about 20% of it so I thought you know what I'll just give you all the recipes but I'll give you a blank food planner and I'll teach you how to plan your meals and you can do as much or as little as you want. Yeah, that's such a great idea because that's teaching them then you're not you know you're learning how to meal plan and take the steps that you would take to, to do it yourself. And yeah. I never understand in all those programs whenever anyone sends you a meal plan that you have to have different breakfast every day. I never eat different oh. breakfast every day. Maybe, no. maybe I know. <laughs> <laughs> I eat the same thing a couple of times a week and maybe I might mix it up a little bit. It's not like it's the same thing every day. But why do I have to eat a different breakfast every day? <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's it. And I think they do that to try and get you to try lots of different things. But I'm going to give you, you know, in this program, I give you all the recipes and you can just pick out the ones that speak to you and try them. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So um, just so that everyone knows as well, Leah, um, the early bird special for Shiny Healthy You actually ended last night. Uh, so what we decided to do is to continue the early bird special but to put it on a secret page just for the Brisbane Paleo people. And so you guys have got your own special page. So if you actually went to shinyhealthyu.com, it's going to cost you 127 bucks. But if you go to the link that Leah's put up, it's still there as the early bird price of 97. So um, because I love you guys. Thank you. <laughs> I love doing webinars with you and I, I like helping you guys out because, you know, you're one of the no, you're one right. of the first paleo people I met, and um, and I know yeah. how supportive and how wonderful your group is. Yeah, thank you. And we had a couple of our members do the um, program last round as well, and they all found it really beneficial, which is really good. So, yeah, yeah. Um, 
Yeah, and that's why I love promoting um, this one because you understand you're a naturopath, you've got all this background, it's really helpful to people and what the information that you've put together is, yeah, just fantastic. So that's why I really like recommending your program to other people. Thank you. And I also understand that we all live in the real world. So that's why this program is only 80% paleo and there's 20% of things in there that you might like to eat that still aren't going to be the worst thing in the world. So, you know, you might find a little bit of rice or a few potatoes or a little bit of corn. Oh, my God. Um, but, yeah, it is 80% paleo but 100% gluten-free and 100% whole food because I know that sometimes you just need popcorn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good. So if anyone's got any questions, put them in. We've got a few minutes left. And so, yeah, feel free to type it in and and um, ask Jules anything while she's here. Yeah, so um, thanks for chatting with us. It's been a really, really interesting talk, all about You're adrenal welcome. fatigue to start with, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and, um, you know, judging from those polls, how did we end up? Too many uh, to ended up with 50% 50, 50 after that. I yeah. should have ended the poll once it said 100%. I know, before <laughs> those rebellious people were like, I'll show her. <laughs> Still I'm time to change it back, people. There's still no, no, time to I've change changed, it back. I've ended the poll. That's it. Oh, you don't have any more. <laughs> game over, oh, folks. <laughs> now, does that, did that um, offer come up? Oh, no, it didn't come up then. I had a little offer created there. No. Anyway, I've got the link up anyway for people. Yeah. So, yeah. So, I think Astrid's, um, she's saying thank you. She's going to message you in a few weeks to make an appointment, which is cool. great. Awesome. You'll get to yeah. see my newly painted clinic room, Astrid. It's pretty awesome. <laughs> awesome. I'm pretty excited. Okay. So, oh. um, I'll send everyone the replay after as well, so you can go back and watch anything that you like, and then we'll send the... Yep. Um, the sheet out as well. Now technically the program, enrolments for the program finish tomorrow night, so Friday night at midnight. Do you want me to keep it, how, how um, with people watching the replay, do they watch it on Saturdays as well? Do you want me to just keep it open yeah. until Saturday? Yeah, I think let's keep it open until Saturday and I'll put that on the email that I send out to everybody letting them know to, yeah, that it's this um, webinar is time sensitive, yeah. Yeah, I'll keep it up. I'll just keep it all open because you're on a separate page to everyone else. So I can close down everyone else's enrollments, but just keep you yours quietly open in the background until you say. Okay, yeah, awesome. it, it does program does start on Monday, so I really have to take it down on Saturday night though. Yeah, no, that's fair enough. And it is yeah. good to do it at the same time with everybody because that's what gives you the great motivation and inspiration and everything like that. Oh, yeah. To, we're we're all starting on Monday. There, there is no yeah. There is no other group. It's everyone in yeah. together. It's more fun. Yeah, great. Um, Su Susie's just said the MT. I think that's meant to be MTHFR testing um, via the doctor. Um, maybe it depends on your doctor. Um, it, there are integrative doctors that will do it, um, but you can get MTHFR testing done through most naturopaths now as well. So if you get stuck, let me know and I'll see if I can find someone. Um, or I can, you know, sort you out. And that's a blood test or...? Um, yeah, there's different types. Uh, there's a blood test, you know, the normal in the arm blood test, or now there's a blood spot test that's just come out with my lab. Um, they do a, a finger pin prick one, which is great if you've got kids because they don't have to go through the trauma so much. There's also a cheek swab test that's um, that's $100. So the pin prick one's 70 the cheek one is the, it's called a buccal swab, um, but they're out of stock at the moment for the next month because it was so, um, it was so popular because everyone went, oh, it's available, we'll all do our kids because no one wanted to put needles in their kids. So, yeah, apparently in a month from now we'll be able to do the swab test again and that'll be really awesome. Oh, great. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, all right, so I think well, it's nine o'clock and yep. or ten o'clock your time, so definitely yeah. time for you to go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> and thanks so much for a great conversation tonight, great nourishing conversation. And yeah. thanks everybody for tuning in. And um, look forward to our next one, which is coming up in next month. And I think actually we're going to be talking all things sauerkraut and fermenting with Daniel from Lewis and Son. He's one of the creators behind their awesome um, paleo and FODMAP inspired um, 
foods and small goods. So that's going to be um, an interesting talk about their journey and, and everything. So um, I'll let everyone know when that one's on. Yeah. Cool. So thanks, thanks, everyone. Thank you for having okay. me. Bye. Bye.